Hello, everybody. Scott Framiller, Shelly Netco, and uh, we have a special guest, Terry Huffman. Um, we're here to talk about autism today on The Mental Knot. And uh, you, know what's, you know what's weird is every time, like, there's three cameras or three TVs, and I'm, like, looking around, and, like, right. there's three of me going. I know. You know? Like it freaks you out, doesn't it? Yeah. freak you out a little bit? Like so, camera. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, anyway, so I reached out to you actually on Facebook. And, uh, and the reason why is because you post all these very powerful posts about parenting and children and autism and all those things. And that's something that, that's something that I think needs some awareness, for sure. And when I reached out to you, you were very interested in sharing. So I appreciate you coming on the show. Um, and like Shelly said, I'm going to go from a 10 to a 4 now because, first of all, like I, I can't imagine how hard it must be, but then also how rewarding it would be also. It is. Um, but let's be real. You know, you and Shelly know what being a mother is like. You know, Shelly has five kids and seven grandkids, right? Eight, Eight grandkids, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, so, like, walk us through... Start wherever you want to start. Tell us about it. Educate us. Well, autism is all different. Um, Andrew, I don't know. We, I didn't find out he had autism until he was 13. Wow. Um, when I was pregnant, my platelets fought against his, causing him to have a brain bleed. So he had a stroke before he was born. And then after he was born, he had hydrocephalus. What's the, that? Um, it's where you have water on your brain. Okay. So they had to surgically put a little shunt in his head. Um, it's a device that makes the spinal fluid flow into the abdomen. So he's had that at birth. That will never be taken away. He's had 16 brain surgeries and two leg surgeries. Leg surgeries from what? Um, from all of that trauma from the brain bleed, it's caused him to have a cerebral palsy, legally blind. Usually people that have a hydrocephalus have some kind of visual impairment. And then he got autism at some point. I have no idea when that happened. But so he has a few disabilities. But so he has taught me a lot. Were I moved you... here 27 years ago as a single mom. I got divorced and moved to Arizona to get far away from Monterey. That's where I grew up. Did you did you get divorced because of? Uh, no, just just because. Yep. I mean, not. I don't want to pry into that. <laughs> no, right? no. Everybody has their. Um. Yeah. It, it just wasn't working out. And so you're a successful single mom, and you've taken care of your son. His and you said life. you're going to take care of him his whole life. Yeah. So, so he's 32. How, how old is he? He's 32. 32. Wow. Yeah. His name's Andrew. Andrew yeah. and my mom and dad moved to Arizona with me, so they were a big help. Um. My dad passed away 16 years ago, and my mom just passed away two years ago. Mm. Wow. So, and they were attached on my son. I mean, he was very, um, they didn't do very much without him. He was always. That's super So it's cool. been a, really during COVID and my mom passing away right after, and then Andrew not having my mom, you know, used to having her for 30 years. So there's been a little bit of change so what on. do you like what's a day look like oh it's busy he is um a lot of kids that have autism don't talk he's at the age of 10 months had a 18 month old vocabulary so he's wow. very bright in that area very talkative um he does have some vision and he can get around without needing anything he, he uses a walker most of the time um but it's, he goes to an adult day program. They pick him up in the morning, and then they drop him off in the evening. So, but at night, or when he's not at his program, because during COVID he was with me for seven months straight, now he's like, I don't want to go to my program. I just want to be home with you, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> um, I got my real estate license in that time, so I could be home with him. Once my mom passed away, I thought, I need to do something to where I have more time to spend with him. And so now he thinks he's my partner. So he's like, well, I want to go with you everywhere. And I said, well, you can't go everywhere with me. Right. But um, at night, it's very busy. I mean, he can't fix dinner by himself or, you know, take a shower by himself or any of that. He needs help with everything that he does. He can do it a little bit, but he, he needs that constant. So, like, from a relationship standpoint, he's is he... Um, like, could, like... 
is the, is there I don't even know how to say it like is there a next step or is this just it I don't really know I mean when he was first born they told me he was going to be a vegetable if he lived he wasn't going to be he was not gonna see he was gonna be blind and obviously he he has vision and he's definitely not a vegetable so you know I don't know how to, so I, I'm at a restaurant or whatever and I see somebody come in with a child with special needs. Mm -hmm. And I always wonder, I'm like, man, that must be super hard. Like, but even just going to a restaurant is super hard. Doing anything is Everything super hard. is really hard. It, and if it's not in his routine. Does it mess him up? Yeah. Routine is very important for them. So the movies you, we watch, those, it's critical. Yeah. Have you ever watched Atypical? I don't think so. I, Rain Man comes to mind, though. Rain Man? Um, they're, most children or adults that have autism are extremely brilliant. It's just they're, they can't do certain things. But it's all there at times. He's what's, very verbal, but... What's Andrew's gift? What is he good at? He's very good at um, just being happy. I mean, he's a really happy kid. That's cool. Um, he's very smart, very intelligent with his vocabulary. That's um, really neat. I, I know one of the things that... Um, that mothers of autistic children really lack is is getting that reciprocal affection is, mm -hmm. is that something that you've struggled with um you know he's pretty easy about that i mean he'll let me hug him but if i kiss him like i'll say give me a kiss he'll go like he'll move his cheek to me because mm -hmm. they don't really like that physical touch right but he's different um and i don't know if it's just I don't really know why he's so verbal and others aren't so verbal. Mm. Um, but he loves to have his feet touched I mean, all the time. Mm. My girlfriends come over, or any of my friends, and they're like, he goes, well, you tickle my feet. I go, you don't ask my friends to tickle your feet. <laughs> yes, I mean, he it's does. It's only my, girl, my <laughs> girlfriends, not my guy friends. He oh, doesn't that's ask cute. Them. I love that. But the girls are like, <laughs> oh, you want me to tickle <laughs> your right. feet? <laughs> okay. And he's like, I have lots of girlfriends. And I'm like, I love that. He has <laughs> lots awesome. of, he's kind of, um, he kind of goes towards women, mm -hmm. and I don't know why. If it's, I mean, he's had my dad in his life his whole life, and mm -hmm. now I have I have a stepdad who is very very involved the last 16 years, and he's right there mm. for him. Um, in fact, he's picking him up from my house today. Mm -hmm. um, but he just I don't know. He gravitates to women, but no. Every day is like, Mom, will you buy me a dad? And I'm like, well, it's not oh, so easy. Not like I can just go and yeah. Don't we always for relationships? Yeah, like, right. If we could all just like, yeah, right? then we'd be, then yeah. we'd be set, right? Yeah. What um, what do you do for you? Um, that's probably why when we're talking about doing the exercise, it's just to get away, or just if I go. have lunch with one of my friends, you know, just have kind of normal, or I'm always on the phone with them. But so it's constant. It's pretty much constant. Mm. Yeah. If it wasn't for my stepdad, you know, because you can't just hire a babysitter to come over. He's a little bit. He knows how to manipulate a little bit, so he knows how to get his way at times. Um, but that's not like in, when you say manipulate. That's not really intentional. That's like no, no. State, he just right? is very persistent. I mean, when he wants something, he won't give up. You Isn't might have to say it like. Are? No. Pretty much the Wait, ones I know. Maybe I'm, not, I'm, maybe I'm making a joke about it, but it's like yeah. kind of. It's his man part, maybe. I yeah, don't maybe, know. maybe, yeah, yeah. His man card that he pulls, maybe. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. That's funny. What um, do you have like a group or friends or like? I how do. do you support? All like, my friends support? love Andrew. They're like, you know, they all chip in and say, "Hey, let's all go out to lunch," or they'll come over for dinner and want to hang out with him, or let's go do tacos, or. So I do have a really, a lot of really, really close friends. Does Andrew have friends? like in? You know, that's the sad part. He goes to the, his adult program, um, but most of them aren't as high functioning. Mm. I mean, some of them are and some of them aren't. Um, but they don't really, I don't, he kind of gravitates to more, he's always gravitated to like more adult people that can ha carry on a silly conversation with them. Because he doesn't always, when he's talking to, he's not always... I call them anderism. Sometimes it's kind of silly talk, and not everybody can engage in that kind of talk. Wow. So it, he acts different with the different people. And it, so is there, you said there's certain types of autism? I don't know. 
Um, there's certain, um, some kids that have autism. It used to be you're on the, well now it's that you're on the spectrum. Before there was like high functioning or lower functioning. So they used to say he had Asperger's. But nowadays I think they just say it's on the spectrum. On the spectrum, yeah. What is that? So. Like, what does that even mean? I've heard that used a bunch. They, when I hear on the spectrum, it sounds like you're super smart. They're all super smart. Right? <laughs> I mean, he'll say, I'm brilliant. He, he's very, very intelligent. Oh, I think he's a lot smarter than I give him credit for at times. Because he'll be talking about something. And I'm like, how did you even know about that? Things that I don't think that just because sometimes I think of him as a 15-year-old in a way, even though he's 32, just because he doesn't go on dates. He doesn't, you know, hey, I'm going to go out with my friends tonight. Um, so driving's out. Driving's out because he's legally blind, too. Right. I tease him sometimes. I'm like, hey, Andrew, I'm really tired today. Will you drive? He's like, Mom, I'm legally blind. I can't drive. I'm like, all right. So I won't ask you then. <laughs> but <laughs> does, he, does he, like, drink or, like, nothing? doesn't drink. He only drinks water and Coke, even though he calls his Coke his beer. It's like his beer, you know. He's like, I'm having a beer right now. And I'm like, okay. That's cool. So it's totally different. It's just yeah, like another it's, world. It's kind of a little isolated at times just because he doesn't have... I think most kids that have autism don't really have, unless they're so high functioning that they can have a job and all of that. He doesn't have that capability, I mean, maybe a little bit, but hopefully someday he'll be able to do something because he loves computers and he loves certain things, but it's just get, keeping him focused. On whatever task yeah, it is. Yeah. That's kind of a guy thing too. Like It's hard for every, all guys to focus on shit, I think. Yeah, Actually, I think I it's funny. It's instinctively, I want to say, what does he do for fun? But I also know that for someone with autism, they don't like surprises. They, no, I they, mean, it, there's a lot of us who don't like surprise parties, but... Unless it's a CD. It, yeah, but it's a surprise it's party a every day for them if it's mm -hmm. something is out of routine, and that's yep. not good. Right. They like so, to be, they like to know what we're going to do ahead of time, like bedtime is, you're going to go to bed in five minutes. He likes to be, like, warned. Right. Or we're going to go... Take a shower now. It's going to be time to take a shower, or it's breakfast, or right. the van's here. You got to hurry up. So, so, so fun is routine. Yeah, right. That's Which like the comfort zone. Is that? But right. I think that's, I don't, somewhat to some level, routine is comfortable for everybody, right? Just mm -hmm. not right. that. Yeah, like but, yeah this like is extreme. extreme. This is necessary. Routine. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And high functioning, I think that applies too. Like I've heard people say, oh, you know, he's he's on the spectrum, right? Like somebody super smart, like oh, they're on the spectrum, and they're super. They like, just have, like, want to say little, anal or whatever. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people are, um, like, for Andrew, he has lots, of, he used to have lots of titles before he had that title of having autism. They said he had progressive developmental disorder, and I said, well, what is that? And it's the, where you perseverate on things, OCD, mm. or um, sometimes uh, he's a little bit more sensitive at times. Uh, especially since my mom passed away. He could be crying in his room. And I'm like, why are you crying? And he's like, I don't really know. Mm. Was it mm. because my Mimi went to heaven? And I said, I don't know. Or your papa went to heaven. Or I had a, an older brother that just passed away four years ago as well. So, Jeez, so he's sorry. had a lot of, like, thank you, a lot of special Stuff people that were on. there right. all his life. Just poof, not mm -hmm. there. So, so, and that's a breaking routine, too. So yes. the tough question is, right, like, this is, I think everybody wants to know this. So... We go back to that example, you know, you're in a restaurant or whatever, and everybody, everybody's going to look, right? Mm -hmm. That's just how people oh, are, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's difficult They do sometimes. in the grocery store, they do. Like, right? Mm -hmm. They're like looking and, so like to support or, it, do you just not engage or is it okay to engage? You're like, what, what do you do? It's okay to engage. I have, um, like when we're going to the checkout stand, a lot of times he'll say something funny and they'll just, they know that he's on the spectrum and they'll just say oh my gosh yeah I hope you have a really good day or they'll just kind of go along with whatever he's saying mm -hmm. you know but I think I think it's they kind of have that inner sense I know he does if you're like really ang have a lot of anxiety he can feel it or if you're calm he can feel it he, I don't know what it is about it, him it seems like that people sort of pull back in situations like that right like they don't know what to do like they think they're different but mm -hmm. they're not really different. You know what I'm saying? They're like not. They have the same, same feelings. Yeah, yeah, you interact the same as you would a regular kid. or not. I don't want to yeah. say it like that, but you know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's hard to, that's why I said this is a hard question or a hard conversation because 
I think people always want to ask the question, but they don't know how to exactly. approach the subject. No, I and think there's no book that says like what there to do. There is no book on autism, right? So then, you know, if you see a special needs kid, you act normal. Exactly. Like nothing yep. changes in my world. No, you just say like, hey, hi. Dude, what's going on? Yep. Oh, your name's Andrew. What's up, bud? Like, how's things? You yep. Know? And he loves that. Like, it just yeah. makes him feel special. You know, like hey. Right. Not yeah, because I I see. You know, sometimes like there's people they, they do baby talk and shit like that, and, mm-hmm. and I'm, no. or and I'm talk not judging. Extra loud. You don't know what to do? Yeah, and you're trying to help and like kind of take. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, he's always he doesn't even like when he was little. Didn't even like cartoons. He like it hit the, from like not the baby stage. He just went to the adult stage. He's mm-hmm. just always like that more adult stuff always. Mm-hmm. So I never did the baby talk with him, but yeah, he That's just cool. likes the. So he fun like mentally he's functioning like super high level. Mm-hmm. But like, is a, is a, person, he can't be like, is he, he can't is be he alone a because is of he like a twenty year old? Is he? It's all over the board. It just Depending and he mimics things. So like, if he watches TV and he hears things, he mimics it. And you think he knows what he's talking about, but he really doesn't know what he's talking about. Oh wow! At times, but sometimes he really does know. Because then I'll say, hey, "Well, how did you know about that?" And then he'll tell me, and I'm like, "Oh, okay. I guess you really did know." It's kind of like me on the show. <laughs> sort of like that. He's like, I heard it somewhere. I heard this shit. Heard somewhere. it somewhere. It must be true, right? <laughs> Have you heard of YouTube? That's cool. Yeah. So it's so it's so interesting how like you think sometimes that kids like that or people like that they're not all that different. No, they're not. They're not all that different. Mm-mm. You know, they have like special challenges or maybe challenges, but they're not all that different really when you boil it down. Right. You know. No. Right. They maybe all like some of the guy things like we said earlier are enhanced. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know what I'm saying. But mm-hmm. like what you said, I mean, I do that every day on this show, so it's it's cool. It's he's, just he's like everything; right. it's a matter right of our response, right? Yeah, absolutely. And just yeah. because we're not conditioned or we don't know, is what exactly. makes it wrong, right? Yeah. It's powerful. What? So, do you have friends that also have kids with special needs? Like, do you I, have like a? Group I have or? a huge following on Facebook. Like me. Yep, of friends that um, I do a lot of autism single parents or um, I have Peloton so it's Peloton for people that have special needs kids and Mm. a lot of times we'll you know text each other or um, they're like well you're you have a child for 32 years I need to follow you because I'll have younger kids on you know how do you handle this or how do you what do you do with this or you know you've gone through that gauntlet of knowing but they're all different like some certain things work and some certain things don't work. I mean, they all, you have to just find what works for your child. So you're doing that philanthropy piece too. You're giving back. Mm-hmm. That helps. Yeah. I'm sure. I love it. It's amazing. That's cool. Yeah. That helps. That helps a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Purpose. And then, um, hobbies, you said like, do you, does he, he <laughs> I don't know would stay in his room for hours. Always have to have a rocking chair. Everybody, mm-hmm. every time I take him anywhere, <laughs> they're like, do you have a rocking chair? Um, so I have a, a, con- a collapsible rocking chair that I take with me if I go on vacation or if I'm going anywhere. And they don't have a rocking chair because he just it's just that something about the soothing. Huh. rocking it's that soothing. they like. They do the stemming with their hands and stuff. He doesn't do a lot of that at, all the time, but when he's happy, you know, he'll be like, two thumbs up, Mom, and I'm like, two thumbs up. Wow. But he, he likes music. He loves to, he thinks he downloads stuff, but he doesn't. Really, I mean, he likes to put his CDs in and out of his computer, but it keeps him busy, and he likes to watch how it's made. During breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we have to turn that on. He doesn't watch it, but he listens to it. That's cool. So, so he is super, like, super, He is. Super, he super likes super intelligent yeah. stuff. He likes to learn. That's neat. That's really neat. It's amazing. I don't know, you know, like, they, they say that things happen in the world like that you're ready for, but that's a big deal. I always say it's God doesn't ask. give you any more you can handle. I'm like, oh, I think he pretty much does at times. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, yeah. yeah. Challenging. Dating I mean, is very challenging. Is, <laughs> is enough, but add this. Right. Yeah. You know, we, I joke, Shelly and I joke a lot about relationships, but how like it, relationships have to be hard too for you. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, he is fine. If you really like someone, he'll be like, are you going to marry my mom? <laughs> like, Andrew, don't ask him that question. <laughs> you know, it kind of makes me feel awkward, even though I tell them when I first start dating him. And obviously, I like to introduce Andrew to everyone because oh, yeah. if they don't get along and he's going to be that's part of the package, the then <laughs> I might as well do it right away. Yeah. 
Um, but it does make it hard at times. Um, my stepdad's really good at watching him so that I can have my date nights or if I want to go hiking with my real estate girls or whatever, the, he's usually very accommodating. Have um, you ever been able to take like a vacation by yourself? I, you know, when my mom was alive, I could go all the time. She'd be, I'll take him. Is there so, any care for like right now? Is there any care? Like you said, getting a babysitter or yeah. somebody to care for him is really hard. Is there any care like that would do that for a week or is there, is there that? You resource? know, I don't know. I'm going to check into that because I do want him to have friends too. Sometimes I think he's just at home with me, with his mom or he's with my stepdad. Yeah. Um, and my stepdad will take him if I say I'm going to go for four days or whatever. I just went on a trip. He's like, I'll watch him. Don't worry about it. Go. That's have cool. Have fun and enjoy yourself because he loves Andrew. He knows him. You know, he's able to take care of him. But it's like a week at a time. Two weeks is pushing it. Hmm. I would think there'd be some kind of services or something. Like some know. sort of like, yeah. I'll, I'll they see. do have certain people that could come to your house. Mm -hmm. But they have to kind of know your child. Mm -hmm. For for Andrew, he's just so different. Mm -hmm. You have to, I right. think with every child that has a special needs, it's better if you know them a little bit before you're just the layers yeah. like here have them for the weekend sure. they wouldn't even know what to say it could make it worse because when he used to he used to, went to the blind school for 10 years and so when he would get ready to go on the bus i would say if you're really good you know when you get home on friday i'll give you five cds and he'd be great but if you say it a different way and you say if you're not good you're not getting anything you kind of put the negatives mm then they're not, they, they just hear the negative part of it and they don't. So people that don't know how to word things sometimes, it makes it a little bit harder on his like frustration level. Like he wow. can have an outburst if you say something a little wrong, even though you didn't mean it to be that way. And then so you, you kind of have to know how to, back, <laughs> how to back that a little bit. Wow. So you're always like, I'm present. All, you're always conscious and present and aware. Yeah, that's always. a lot of energy. That takes mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah, it's exhausting at times. Mm -hmm. Not to say. So do you sleep a lot? <laughs> no. I was going to say, I see no Right sleep. now he's having seizures in the middle of the night, so he wakes up and he's like, Mom, I had a seizure. And I'm like, you're okay, go back to bed. Wow. So that he also has epilepsy. Holy. Wow. So he has a lot of little things. That's amazing. That's but if amazing. you met him, he doesn't seem like he has that many. Huh. Well, even though you can tell, you know, with him walking or he can't, you know, see, he might do this, mm -hmm. you know, instead of honing in right to it. Wow. That's powerful. Yeah. Wow. That's so powerful. You know, when I, like you said, you know, the education, I don't think people understand like how hard that is. I don't think they can fathom. No, and I don't even, can't even put it into words. So no. my friends, you know, they get hurt when they come to visit and they're like, hey, I want to go out and... Sorry, I can't go out because I have Andrew tonight. And it just, that, like, really loud things, you know, was hard for him. He doesn't have to wear earphones like a lot of the kids that have autism. They like to wear the headphones. But sometimes I'm not able to do everything that I want to do when I want to do it. Right. Because I have Andrew or my stepdad's busy or whatever. And then they get, like, I really wanted to go out with you and have my time. And I'm, <laughs> it just doesn't always. But most of my friends, yeah. 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 But most of my friends the girls totally understand they're like oh well, i know because they're moms they kind of understand that that part of it too right man but, yeah. that's amazing it's a huge sacrifice you're incredible thank yeah. you that's powerful thank you it's just i mean it's just my card i was dealt so i don't know sometimes i know i've learned a lot of things over the years from him i would probably wouldn't be the person i am today if it wasn't for him just mm -hmm all the lessons he teaches me every like, day right all of his brain surgeries and his leg surgeries i mean he's will do anything for the nurses too when he goes in for those mm. kind of procedures he's like just don't pull my hair that's all he cares about is the hair on his arm you know <laughs> like it's, it'll be fine crazy. it'll grow back does he get anxiety from that too like does he understand the procedure type thing um he does a little bit like i waiting to do a shunt series to see if his shunt's working because sometimes it can intermittently work and some of his behavior lately has been a little bit stick in the mud to or he'll ask a question 50 times the same question and i'm like you know the answer to that question why are you asking and he'll ask it again which isn't really like how he used to be so i don't know if it's the seizures or if it's the uh you know he has a neurosurgeon 
for the shunt and a neurologist for the seizure. So it's two different doctors, but they both deal with the brain. Wow. Hmm. That's amazing. So it's all very interesting at times. To, it's it's I fascinating to learn about all Like of the it. level of sharing that you just, that's, that's, I mean, I don't even know what to say. You can't it's say it's cool. <laughs> you say it's a lot. Yeah, that's a good way to say it's it. Right? A lot. It's he's a, lot. a gift, though. He really is. He's a blessing. He, he's a happy. Now he's kind of getting back to himself after my mom passed away. And he's getting his cute little bunny where he's happy by, you know, in his mm -hmm. room, rocking, listening to his music mm. in his own world, you know. Mm. That's cool. Wow. Thanks for sharing. Oh, you're welcome. That's good. I didn't, you know, when we say, hey, what do you do? How do you handle it? How do you, it's the same, right? Like, that's the message. They're the same. Yeah, Don't they really different. are. No. Treat them the same. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just Don't acknowledge them and say, how was your day? I mean, some of them can't reciprocate back with what they say. Mm -hmm. But they know, they know, they can hear, they can, yeah, or yeah. they can see you, they can see your expression. I mean, Andrew can't see facial expressions, so that's another thing. And people that have autism don't always know the right words to say. Like, right. sometimes they're not appropriate, even though they don't know, because they just, they're, they're honest. They just tell you how you feel, like, oh, you're fat, and, you know, <laughs> or whatever. They just that's say a, what's I mean, on their mind. Yeah. <laughs> they don't have any filter, I should say, most so of the time. It's kind of like... Kind of like me. Same, it's still the same <laughs> well, a lot thing, of, a lot right? They just enhance like the male negative shit, right? It's perfect. <laughs> I love it. Well, Terry, thank you so much you for coming. Wow. We really appreciate it. You're um, you know, I was going to ask earlier: Would Andrew ever? Would this be appropriate? Like, would it be? Oh, he probably. I don't know if he'd stay on topic, but <laughs> I, I don't know. he would it love it. Might be okay to too. See. I don't he know. would I'd love it if you would. No, would I would. Yeah. I would. Yeah. Because it'd be it'd be cool to have that interaction and understand a little bit more, right? And he now, would answer your questions. So. Of course, mm -hmm. yeah. We could talk exactly. to Andrew about you. Exactly. Like, hey man, how's mom? How's she doing? <laughs> exactly. You know? You're like, my mom rocks. <laughs> That's cool. Well, thanks for coming on. Unless she really takes away the CDs, That's right? really nice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Everybody, right. thanks for watching. I, mean, I think all. this segment was really, really important and, uh, and yeah, insightful for sure. So mm -hmm. again, thank, thank you. you. Thank you for watching, everyone. Take care. Scott Framuller, Shelley Netco, and Terry Hoffman on The Mental Knot.